Hey, thank you guys so much for joining in or tuning in with us. I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying, enjoying these Christmas devos. Um, today we're going to look at the life of Joseph. And I want to kind of set the, the context up of what's going on in Joseph's life before we get into our text today. So Joseph was engaged to be married to Mary. Um, and the engagement back then meant something a little bit different. Um, it actually was a legal binding um, between two people. So you were actually married when you were engaged. And what would typically happen is you would get engaged and then the man would go off for about a year and he would prepare a place for his wife. So Mary and Joseph are in this kind of in-between stage. But in order to separate, somebody either has to die or you actually have to get legally divorced. So Joseph is, he's waiting, he's excited about getting married, and then all of a sudden he finds out that Mary is pregnant. And Joseph knows that it's not his child, so now Joseph has to figure out, what am I going to do? And that's where we pick up in Matthew 1, 19 and 20. Joseph was her promised husband. He was a good man and did not want to make it hard for Mary in front of people. He thought it would be good to break the promised marriage without people knowing about it. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So already we see that Joseph is a good guy. You know, he has two options here. He can either um, separate from Mary publicly and shame her, and the consequences of this were devastating. He could have actually had Mary executed for adultery. But we see that Joseph was going to show mercy towards Mary, and he was going to do this privately. But while he's trying to contemplate on what he's going to do, God gives him a dream. And here's what I want us to focus on today. What, how did Joseph respond to God's dream? And I think we th see three things here that Joseph does. The first is Joseph's reception of God's word. Joseph had a lot of fears about taking Mary as his wife. And, and, for, and practically he should have. I mean, she's pregnant. What am I going to do? How is this going to look? But when God's word came into Joseph's situation, it pushed back the fear. His fear turned into faith. And, he, and I think Joseph had this mindset of, hey, I don't fully understand what's going on here. Joseph didn't, God didn't draw out a perfect picture of what this is going to look like. But when Joseph received God's word, even despite the circumstances, his faith or his fear turned into faith. The second thing is we see Joseph's willingness to let go of his reputation. You got to think that there were people in Joseph's life that were saying, hey man, you need to get rid of Mary. You need to take care of this. You need to get walk away from the situation. This isn't good for you. And sometimes I think that we let what people think about us get in the plan and get in the way of God's plan for us. I can even think back in my life where there may be a time where God was doing something in my life, or maybe there was a message that I connected with, and there was an altar call, and I felt God calling me to come down forward. But my fear of what people were going to think held me back. Or, or maybe you have like a need, or you have something that you're going through, and you're thinking, oh, I've been a Christian for a long time. Why am I struggling with this? And instead of going to someone, getting help, being transparent, we think, oh, no, I can't do that. What will people think about me? Joseph did not care what people thought. He knew that God had a plan, and he didn't care what it looked like. The third thing is this, Joseph's submission. You know, Joseph already had a dream for his life. Joseph was living out that dream. He was going to get married. He had a job. He was going to have kids. Joseph had a plan of what he thought his life was going to look like. But when God presented him with another dream, Joseph chose God's dream. You know, all of us have a choice. We can choose to live our dream for what we have, or we can live God's dream. And what I've seen is a lot of people want to serve God as, lo as long as God is doing what they want Him to do. But sometimes God's dream causes us to live outside of our own. And so here's what I want us to challenge you with. Whose dream are you living out? Are you living out God's dream for your life, or are you living for yourself? The second thing I want us to think about is this, that God still has dreams for us. God has a dream for your life. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And God wants to see that this dream be fulfilled in your life. It's a dream just for you, that God has something huge that he wants to do in your life, just like Joseph. Are you willing to submit to the dream that God has in your life? 
Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for today. God, I thank you that you are a God who still gives dreams, that you are with us, Lord, that you are with us to give us courage in times of fear, and God, that you never leave us or forsake us. I pray that we would live out the dream that you have for us, just like Joseph, that we would receive this dream, Lord, and we would live it out. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.